Welcome to the Watchman's Cry Remnant Watcher, the program that equips the saints and prepares God's people for the return of Christ. God is not a slug. He's not a hermaphrodite. He's not man and woman mixed together. God is God the creator of the universe. His name is not Brahma, and he doesn't mix into a smorgasbord of man-made religions. But unfortunately, there are confused Democrats in Washington who assembled together on Sunday, January the 3rd, and a representative Cleaver, who's in his 70s, who supposedly is a Methodist pastor, is a joke to the Methodist faith. And I'm sure Wesley would be real proud of that one that when he prayed the opening prayer for Congress, he prayed in the name of the monotheistic God. And then he said Brahma, which is a Hindu God. We ask it in the name of the monotheistic God, Brahma, and God known by many names, by many different faiths. A man and a woman. First of all, we don't pray in the name of Brahma. We don't pray in the name of Hindu gods. We don't pray in the name of whoever hears can hear me. Let's just smell the air. And then that's who we'll pray to. That's not how it works. And you know, ladies and gentlemen, it's a joke and it's pathetic that there are people who are representatives of the United States who go to Washington, D.C. and they make fools out of their constituents. And then he finished off with a man and a woman, which shows that for a pastor, he's not very smart. And let me just use layman terms. For a Methodist preacher, Congressman Cleaver, he doesn't know theology. He doesn't know his Bible. To say a man and a woman, a man is a Latin term for so be it, or I agree, or let it be so. It doesn't mean I'm praying to a man, by the way, God. So let's help it out. Let's help out theology and say a woman as well. It's dumb. And it really, really is an embarrassment to everybody. To try to make God genderless. You see, they want to push this gender thing to take away men and women and turn us into things and it's. And they're also trying to leak it into theology and into prayers. That shows how stupid they are. And when I see this type of nonsense, I can understand why there are people, evangelicals, Christians, patriots, conservatives, who say, this is dumb. I've had enough of this. The Democrats are a joke. And they're part of the big cause of why judgments come into America is because they're so liberal and progressive and they don't care about God and they just want to live their own way and shove their nonsense down our throat. I can understand why people are going toward Trump. I can understand why people are seeking out Trump because Trump is supposedly for Christian rights and for religious rights and for the church. And that's what he says. But whether or not he's telling the truth, that's not the issue at the moment. I can understand why people are running to him. I can understand why some of you are running to him because the choices are laid out in front of us. A Democrat who prays to a thing, an it, makes God into something that he's not and takes away the gender of all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, we're grown-ups, And when you go to the restroom, you have plumbing. And you either have plumbing of a woman or a man, and that plumbing is, is there. And that's how we're wired. The hormones are wired for that. Recreation is wired for that. Procreation is wired for that. That's what God did. He made Adam and Eve. God didn't mess up. So these democratic idiots, and I'm sorry if I sound harsh, but that's what they are. So I understand why people are running to Trump. Meanwhile, we have the election coming forth and... A lot of you folks who want to escape this madness of the Democrats and a lot of you folks are terrified of Harris and Biden coming in office because they're going to set the house on fire and finish the uh, demolition that began already with Obama. Unfortunately, some folks have forgotten that the demolition has continued during the last four years and especially during the last year during COVID under Trump's watch. So the country is falling apart under Trump as well. But people don't want to see that. And they just want to imagine that the Democrats are scary. Therefore, we have to run to Trump. I don't trust Trump. 
And I surely don't trust the Democrats. I don't trust any of them, ladies and gentlemen. Left wing, right wing, they're part of the same bird. This is a game. It's theater and Satan is behind it. He's been given permission to make war with the saints. He has been given permission to bring a great delusion. And he has been given permission to run amok with his great deception. The big end time deception that makes people have to choose. And what's going on right now is the greatest deception in the history of mankind. With the COVID lockdowns, the election mess, the election fiasco. I could talk a long time about that, the, the mess of the election. Yes, a lot of votes were stolen from Trump. And it's amazing to me that they made it so obvious. They made it so that they could get caught. It's like they wanted to get caught. It's cheating and defrauding votes away from Trump so that then... Trump needed to activate his determination to be the president and to fight for the cause and to fight for justice and truth and the American way and all of that. So on the Democratic side, we have the idiots who are mocking God. And then on the other side, we have the great illusion, delusion, theater, confusion, fiasco of election fraud and the stolen election from Donald Trump. And in the next few days, this thing is going to come to a conclusion maybe on January the 6th they're gonna meet Congress is gonna meet and we are either going to hear the the states cast their electoral choices and it's gonna be tallied and then we will have the president decided upon for the inauguration on the 20th or Pence is gonna reject the votes and we're gonna go into that crazy article in the Constitution on how the uh, vice president can reject the votes and then it will go to the Congress to vote one vote per state for the president. It looks like that's the direction we're going. If it follows through, I don't know, but Congress people are now coming on board and saying that they're going to reject it. And we have senators now who are saying they're going to do it. So it looks like if this thing goes through, Trump's going to win, but it's not going to be easy. It's going to be with, great duress and there's going to be a lot of unhappy people and folks we're going to have flames in the cities there's going to be an eruption of angry democrats blm people antifa and it's just going to be a mess civil war is going to come and if it doesn't come it's going to be only by the grace of god a miracle that it doesn't come meanwhile while all this is taking place we also have the vaccine that has been created in record time warp speed thanks to donald trump and by the way some of you folks get mad at me and and you've sent me hate mail and then you tell me well, nathan why do you hate trump why are you against trump would you rather have hillary back then it was four years ago people would ask and now they're saying would you rather have biden no i wouldn't would you rather have a pirate or uh, a pedophile rape your daughter would you rather have your son molested by a bank robber or uh a con man. You know, that's how absurd the statement is. Getting mad at me and saying, since I speak out on the things that Trump is doing, then that must mean that I want the other one. And that's just dumb, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. That's crazy logic. No, I don't want Trump and I don't want Biden. I want Jesus to come back and just save us from this mess, but it's not going to happen yet because first we have to go through the tribulation period. And when the tribulation period ensues, we're going to have a leader of Babylon. The Bible tells us that leader is nicknamed Nimrod and Nebuchadnezzar and a lot of other names. And at the moment, President Trump is the leader of Babylon America. If Trump leaves, then it's going to be Biden. And I have a hard time seeing how Biden could be the Antichrist. I have stated that I suspect Trump is the Antichrist. And a lot of you got mad because some of you are waiting for the trumpet to sound and the rapture to happen. And and you, you're thinking that there's no way that Trump can be the Antichrist because if he is the Antichrist and we're in the tribulation, what am I doing here? I, I, I can't be here because I'm going to get raptured. Therefore, it can't be Trump and he won't be revealed until we get raptured away. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen? The church is in such a mess right now. End time Bible prophecy has been misinterpreted to such an extent that the church is deluded with false expectations 
and a false narrative, and they are looking for signs that are never going to happen. And I've talked about this on my program many, many times for the last 12 years. The signs that people are looking for are not going to happen. But that's a whole other thing and entirely. Let's talk about right now what's going on. In the next few days, we're going to have a choice for the president, and the United States is going to erupt. If Trump stays in office, if, he, if he's able to pull it off, we're going to have civil war. If Trump is denied and Biden is the choice, then we're going to have a lot of angry Trump supporters. We're going to have, either way, a false flag. We're going to have provocateurs erupt the calm right now to get the storm started, to bring the storm here, to bring the tornado, to bring the hurricane. And it's going to be a mess, folks. It's going to be horrible. And I just want to warn all of you to just be ready. Get prepared. I hope you're ready. Those of you who are listening to this right now, if you can, scrape together some extra dollars and go get some supplies. Get water. Get some extra food in case there's a lockdown, in case there's martial law, in case the uh, trucks stop running, in case cities are burning and there's no deliveries and the stores are not even in existence because they're going to be burnt down. I don't know. I hope that doesn't happen. But if it does, are you ready? That's the question. Are you ready to weather the storm that's coming? Also, folks, we have this vaccine thing that's here. Warp Speed was approved by Trump. He got it going. He approved it. It's his vaccine. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, the vaccine didn't just show up in the last few weeks. It didn't just get approved in the last few weeks. The vaccine has existed since January of a year ago. They were working on the vaccine a year ago before the pandemic even arrived. This thing is all staged. The pandemic, the COVID mess is the first horse of the apocalypse. The white horse, the rider on the white horse was wearing a crown and he conquered the whole world. That spirit, that entity conquered the whole world. And here we are a year later, the world's been conquered by the Cervasive virus. It's been conquered. The next horse is red. That means war. It means a body count. It means people die. It means there's going to be a spirit of murder, a spirit of anger, a spirit of death, a spirit of hatred. Fill in the blank, folks. Get out the thesaurus and just look at all the synonyms of hatred and betrayal and war. That's what's coming. Jesus warned us in Matthew 24 that many would betray one another, that in the same house there would be people against one another, Relatives would be against one another. And he was talking about the end times. And over and over in Matthew 24, we see the reoccurring theme of war, of people hating one another, betraying one another, backstabbing, even in the church. In fact, at the end of Matthew 24, he talks about the unprofitable servant who says, the Lord, my master is delaying his coming. And he goes in and starts just hanging out with his buddies at the Cheers Tavern Bar and beating on his fellow servants, the fellow brethren, Christians. He starts beating up on Christians, and we're also seeing that, folks. We're going to see a civil war within the church where Christians are fighting one another. It's going to be a mess. In fact, that's already started. So, folks, fasten your spiritual seatbelts. Don't take this lightly. The COVID mess has a lot more coming. 2021 is going to be the arrival of the storm. In the previous year, 2020, we saw the opening credits. We saw the trailer, the movie trailer of what's coming in 2021, 2022. And in this coming year, folks, it's going to get worse. I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news, but we're under judgment. God is judging the entire planet. He's judging the church. He's judging every one of us. And we're going to go through the blender as Christians, because that's what needs to happen. In truth, ladies and gentlemen, the, the future of this world is going to involve a tribulation period, a three and a half year, 1,260 day period where this world is going to be thrust into a whirlwind. And the tornadoes of judgment are going to uproot the world, uproot the financial system. It's going to be a great, great challenge, ladies and gentlemen. We have the vaccine e-card, vaccine passport that they're already talking about where we can't buy or sell or have a bank account or travel or do anything. 
And, uh, you know, when we consider that, it kind of sounds like the mark, doesn't it? So we have the mark kind of looking like the mark. We have the world in tyranny. We have corona-type crown sickness that took over the world and conquered it. You know, folks, kind of looks like Revelation is unfolding before our eyes, doesn't it? You know, that's true. If that is true, the cast of characters is here already. We're watching it. And also, folks, unfortunately, for those of you Christians and patriots and conservative ones, Donald Trump is going to play his role. He's been recruited to oversee the demolition of the dollar and the reboot of the world financial system and then the vaccine, while at the same time maintaining an appearance of being an ally with the church and with Christians. When Trump... Win. And that because I really believe he's going to win. If he doesn't, then I guess we'll have to deal with Biden. You know, whoever wins, folks, they're going to bring their own method of pain and torment. But I expect Trump to win. And when he does, we're going to see the true colors. We're going to see him take off his mask. We're going to see the true Donald Trump. And we're going to see tyranny come over America. We're going to see lockdowns. We're going to see the reset. It, the COVID 20. 21 reset is coming. The great reset is coming, ladies and gentlemen. Have you heard Trump talk about it? Have you heard him say it's a bad thing? Have you heard him talk about how this thing is good or bad? No, you don't hear him saying anything. Do you hear him exposing Klaus Schwab, the leader of the World Economic Forum, who wrote the book, The COVID-19 Reset, The Great Reset? Have you heard that, folks? How many congressmen have you heard exposing it, shouting from the rooftops about it. How many have you heard? You see, folks, this is all theater. And the end result of all of this mess is going to be the tribulation period. It's going to be a dystopian world where we're going to be in perpetual lockdown until Jesus comes back. So where does that put us? Where does that put you? Well, it puts you with having to get ready, having to weather it, having to navigate it, and not allowing yourself to be overcome and overwhelmed with the delusion and the deception that's taking place right now. Ladies and gentlemen, in order for Trump to win, we have to see an upheaval of the United States political system. Now, if Biden and Harris are in there, it's going to get bad and horrible and, and terrible. But if Trump's in there, we're going to see turmoil in a different way. So, ladies and gentlemen, hang on to your faith. Hang on to the scriptures. Make memories with your family. And also, while we're going through this, folks, try to warn all your loved ones. Warn them and do not let them take the vaccine. Do not let your family members take it. Don't let your kids. Try to discourage your, your siblings. If you're a grown-up, if you have grown-up parents, elderly parents, try your best to discourage it. I know for the most part, there's probably a chance that a good number of you, as well as me, may not be successful in discouraging family members from taking it, but just at least try, folks. At least try, because that Cerveza Corona vaccine is going to have some side effects in the future, and it has built-in triggers that can be activated down the line, months later, that can actually activate a disease or a reaction in the recipient of the vaccine, which could lead to anaphylactic shock or a cytokine storm, it's going to kill them. And then when we look at the nanobots and the hydrogel, folks, there's so much going on right now. So hang in there, ladies and gentlemen. Hang in there. They are doing this to us. And there are some very, 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 very powerful entities that are behind this and entities that are working with leaders of the world. And there are people at the very highest level, way up, the very highest level that are managing this whole thing around the whole world. So uh, it's not going to go away. And the deception now, they're going for broke. There's no way they can back off from this. There is no way we're returning to the year 2018 or 2017. You know, when things were weird, but at least not now how they are. This thing is going to continue until they have spilled the very last drop of blood financial blood, economic blood from the dollar, from businesses, from the middle class, from you guys, from us. 
They're going to suck out every piece of blood they can, every drop, and then literal blood as well. They're going for this thing, folks. They're going to destroy the economy. The, this lockdown is going to ensure, it's going to ensure that the remaining businesses that are out there, the restaurants, the mom and pops that have tried to hold on, are not going to make it. And this is all by design. They want this thing to happen. They want this, this crash to come. They want the hurricane to come, the tornado to come. They want all of this mess, folks. So that they can bring about the reboot. But ladies and gentlemen, this thing is in our face. It's in your face. And we're not going back to normal. So please, please try to keep all this in perspective. Deagle.com tells us, for those of you familiar, tells us that the population of the world in five years, or actually in four years now, 2025, is going to go down. The United States, which is almost 350 million, is going to go down to less than 100 million, according to Deagle.com. And most Western states of Europe are going to also lose a large portion of their population, many countries, while the East will either be pretty stable or go up and rise. So that begs the question, is this how they're going to do it? Are they going to do it with this COVID scare hoax pandemic? Which, by the way, folks, I'm not saying COVID doesn't exist. So please don't write me and say, I had it. It exists, Nathan, because I had it. Well, I'm not saying it doesn't exist, folks. I'm saying it's not a pandemic. Because a pandemic has bodies dead on the street, falling dead, dropping dead, being buried in the backyard, being buried in the city park, being buried, thrown in dumpsters, burned, thrown down the river, thrown in the ocean. That's what a pandemic is. If you watch the movie The Stand, that's a pandemic. That's dead people everywhere. We're not seeing that. We're not seeing it. However, now we have the new mutant strain that is 70% more contagious and it's going to be deadlier. And then after that, we're going to have even more strains that will come forth. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we need our faith in God. Strengthen yourselves, my friend. Get strong. Get prepared. Be awake. Be sober. But please don't go to sleep. And please, ladies and gentlemen, please don't put your faith in a politician. There's a lot of folks who have turned Trump into a, a cult religion. And they are now invoking that God and the angels and the Holy Spirit are fighting against the powers of darkness and hell to to stop the defeat of Trump, to stop the steal of the election from Trump. They're turning this into a spiritual battle of light versus darkness. Folks, that's not what it is. This fiasco, this theater of Trump and, and the uh, stolen election is part of the deception that is being allowed to occur from God He's allowing Satan to do it. It's part of the great delusion. Trump is not the savior of America, and he's not going to save us from the crash of the dollar. He's not going to save us from COVID. He's not going to save you from the vaccine. He's not going to save you from having to get a vaccine pass. And by the way, excuse the train, folks. I apologize. There's a train across the road. I, I live next to the tracks. Trump is not going to save you or your family or this country from the vaccine because he's the one who authored and executive ordered the vaccine, ladies and gentlemen. It's from him. He's part of it. He's playing his role. When Trump gets into office, he's going to continue. The baton is in his hands. The COVID occurred under Trump, folks. All those mom and pop, those 50 million people who are unemployed happened under Trump. The greatest economic catastrophe in the history of mankind throughout the world occurred during the watch of Trump, folks. It's not some 3D chess or 4D chess or 5D chess to round up all the pedophiles. That's not what this is. This is a manufactured crisis, a controlled demolition of the world financial system using the ruse and the bad guy and the scary guy, the boogeyman of COVID. That's what this is. So ladies and gentlemen, we're in a delusion. Do not allow politics to take over your faith in God, folks. Don't. When Jesus comes back, he didn't say, when the Son of Man comes back, will he find patriotic Americans? Will he find patriotism on the earth? That's not what he said. He said, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on the earth? Faith in who? Faith in him. Faith in the word. Faith in God. Not faith in Trump. Not faith in the red, white, and blue. Not faith in 
the Star Spangled Banner and the Constitution. Yes, those things are good. And yes, those things have made America a pretty good place to live for a while, in spite of all the Illuminati Freemasonic influence. It's still been a good place to live. And I'm glad that I'm an American. But America doesn't trump Christianity. Unfortunately, a lot of folks have melted it together. To a lot of folks, Christianity is red, white, and blue. Christianity is Jesus saving America and not really caring about the third world people because America is the most important. That's how it is in people's eyes. Now, if and when Trump comes to power, if he can pull this thing off, I'm going to be releasing a disclosure to explain to you some things that most people in the church are not going to want to know. They're not going to want to hear. And they're going to wish they didn't know it. So I'm just waiting and I'm watching. And if perchance Trump doesn't get into office, that doesn't mean he's going away. There's still 2024 and there could still be a civil war and a coup. You know, some of the coups through history <clears throat> didn't only occur through elections. They occurred after the fact, between the elections, by force. So, folks, any number of things could occur. Any number of things, and when they do, please do not believe the lies in the narrative that they're going to be shoving down our throat. Don't believe it. Because it's all a delusion. It's part of the great deception. All right, folks? So, uh, with that, God bless you. Take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.